Hi, Roxanne. Welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Cloud. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to talk to you. Good to talk to you, too. Tell me how um, I can help you. So, so, how you can help me today. I have been working on this for a number of months now, um, and I kind of keep coming to a different conclusion, and so it's kind of keeping me stuck. I am trying to work on a plan for healing. Um, I've had ongoing emotional problems and um, it's been a real problem for attachment, bonding and relationships. I emotionally isolate pretty consistently. Um, but it's how old are you? In the last few years. I'm 35. 35, okay. Yeah. And it's only um, been in the I've last few the years. Um, in the last few years, I'll say it's uh, it's kind of escalated in terms of the degree of isolation and the interruption in my ability to work. Um, and mm. it took me a long time to kind of acknowledge to myself that I was having regular panic attacks daily and particularly associated oh. with anything, anything social at all. Um, and it was <clears throat> so draining to me that I would kind of just gather myself by just being alone. Um, with them, so to, uh, if I can understand those, those, this right, you, you're kind of floating along okay, mm -hmm. but if you're going to go do some kind of social event, then you start to get panicky, and then you say, well, I'm not going to do that, and you withdraw and alone, and then the anxiety goes down. Is that what happens? Yes, and it's with all yeah. kinds of relationships, but I'll say the biggest triggers are anybody I'm living with, um, but also any kind of like work situation. Um, to kind of paint a little bit more context, so I'll say also within the last few years, I started getting a little bit more educated about dissociation, and I started seeing a therapist that helped me kind of evaluate that, and we didn't come to any firm conclusions, but it, it did start to make more sense to me in terms of my experience. Like, it feels like the level of internal conflict I feel um, with parts of myself, um, and then those parts coming out in situations I really don't want them to because well, they're, we're, like, well, the weakest or the most vulnerable Oh, what and what would be a what would one of those parts look like and when would it come out? Um, kind of like really, really needy childlike parts coming out in adult relationships or in work situations. Um, or particularly it, I guess more it, what would happen what in a work situation. What does it look like? Because sometimes people Yeah. They'll they'll they want somebody to you know, give me a drink of water. And they say, I'm so needy. I shouldn't ask that, you know, I'm so, and, but other times, right. I mean, I mean, they're, they're literally crying on the floor, holding somebody's ankle. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. So where, where, where are we talking about <laughs> okay. on that? Continuum? So mine doesn't look like that. I'll say, I think what it looks like is it looks like an inappropriate, premature, like grasping for um, attachment. And sometimes in my head, I am not, this feels horrible to say this. I, so I'm a Christian. I'm very committed to, I want to be a good person. I want to be moral and respectful. And I find myself like fantasizing that I have like more of like a, like I'll have friends, their husbands. I'm like feeling more emotionally, like wanting them, if that makes sense. And it, uh -huh. but I'll find myself like wanting to like reach out and express like physical affection and, and things. And I just feel completely confused. Um, and I like so physical affection, last... physical affection. You said like childlike needy, like, you know, want daddy to hug me and hold mm -hmm. me or this and another or more adult sexual fantasies. More adult sexual kind of things, but in an adult okay. relationship. So my most recent adult relationship, it was weird because those two things were blended. So we were like, well, and a lot of times, way too fast did, in the adult. Yeah. You and somebody's husband were going way too fast. No, no, no. It was me and a, he was a single guy. We were dating. We went way too fast oh, okay. physically and emotionally inside of the relationship. I was. I was kind of acting like um, I was so exceptionally passive and panicked the whole time that I didn't, um, it was almost like on the inside, I felt like I was frozen. And so if he did something that I didn't want, I didn't feel like I could say no. And it wasn't anything he did that made me feel that way. He wasn't abusive. It was something on the inside that was like, no, right. Michelle, you can't, you can't say no. Okay. Let me Does ask you something. Um, I, very much so. Um, what you have 
what you've described, um, there's several pathways, you know, to getting there. Um, but one of the things I have to ask is, is, is there, uh, because you mentioned dissociation, you mentioned these parts, and then you, you mentioned being frozen. All of those make me wonder, you know, is there any kind of trauma that you've never dealt with? Any kind of sexual trauma? Any other kind of physical trauma? Um, I don't remember it. And the thing is, is I just started having dreams as an adult that I was having sexual encounters with one of my parents. But I don't remember anything. I just started having dreams. Okay. Um, and, and you mentioned therapy. Well, let, let me ask another question. Mm -hmm. have, have, apart from the trauma, um, was there a lot of, uh, let's call it deprivation slash abandonment in your history? Where you, somebody you yeah, just didn't have very constant much. love? Yeah. Very much. Okay. Yeah. My so you, mom was so unavailable and my dad was completely unavailable as well. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's say a little kid comes into the, I mean, this is not, this is not rocket science, right? A little kids, a little kid comes into the, right. into the earth and what are they, what are they like? They're needy, right? Mm -hmm. And so they really are attachment seeking and exactly like you've described. Now I'm going to say something to you um, that I want you to hear here. That is your most valuable part, this neediness. Mm -hmm. It's not how you feel about it, probably. Right? It feels important. It just feels like I don't know. It's like I have... <laughs> It feels like I have this family of people inside of me that all have different needs and I don't know where to take them. And I awesome. don't know how to organize my, I don't know how to organize my life so that that's possible. Like I well, try to go to work well, and I don't know, like I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Susan, I'm sorry, Roxanne. Um, I just, you would be, you would be an absolute joy to work with because you can articulate this. You can Thank see you. you got this family of people and, and what a good therapist would do. I mean, what you kind of need in your life, you kind of need a little bit of a daycare center, right? Where you can bring all yeah. these kids in with all their different parts and begin to express those. Cause right now you're, you're divided into different parts. That's normal. But what, 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 needs to happen is for all those parts to become integrated where you have different mm -hmm. moods and expressions and you can flow in and out of them this and the other right now they're segmented and they're segmented because they basically yeah. never had some basic needs met and never been able to express and this and the other so here's what i would suggest to you um are you in therapy now uh it just got started yes okay good then that's a good thing. So you're in the right place. If if your therapist under does your therapist understand all this stuff that you've expressed to me? Um, I'm kind of in the process of evaluating how comfortable I feel with her. So or how how well it seems like she's able to appreciate. She, we only met twice, and she suggested that she thought I might be borderline. But I asked her about complex trauma and dissociation, and she said that she just takes a lot more time to diagnose something like that. Why did she tell you you were borderline? Because you have abandonment issues? Um, I think because I think I was describing, see, part of the situation too is I have memory problems, and I'm sure you understand that. Um, I think memory, I was is describing. That you, you say memory? I have memory problems. Yes. Do you lose? Do you lose? Do you lose? Do you lose segments of time? In my, it takes me a long, it'll take me a long time to remember what I did at a certain time. And then, so I might not lose all of what I did, but I'll lose a lot of the details. So I'll be able to tell okay. you very vaguely and it, but, but it doesn't really feel like that was, I was there. Okay. All right. Well, I would, that make um, sense? yeah, but that could be detachment as well. What I was wondering about is you truly dissociate going to what's called a fugue state. 
um, which happens okay. with a lot of trauma people. Um, so I would continue to talk to her about this and try to get an understanding if you guys are a good fit and 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 how how she's going to treat all this. But everything you're describing yeah. is is very. I just want you to be. I just want you to be in therapy and begin to. What's happening is you you're going to take all these different parts of you and you're going to bring them into the room, right? And mm -hmm. you're going that's the process by which all this stuff gets healed. And then what you're going to have to do, and this sounds a little cheesy, but you know, <laughs> when you go to work, um, you're going to have to, you know, sort of say to the kids, okay, my little parts can talk to my therapist about this. I got to show up and produce a report here. Right. So you're, you're integrating all this, but you're not in conflict. And so I would say based on, based on what you've said that the, the best thing for you is in a really good therapeutic relationship with somebody who really understands this and can help you help you to, to integrate it. I would suggest one more thing um, <clears throat> because I'm, what have I said here? I've, I've, I've tried to normalize it for you and what's got to happen for this and can happen and will happen, I think, is the way you can articulate it because you're very observant, you're containing it, you're not acting it out really, but um, as you put expression to this, it's, it's going to all integrate, but you've got some real needs that, that need to be met and healed through a good healing environment. And so I would really, really focus on those things and make sure you got the right therapist and you guys can talk about that and just continue down the path. Now the, the panic attack side of this, it's going to be treated by your therapist, but also if it's social anxiety, as you're doing all this, I would encourage you to the best you can. We're actually we're, we're going to have an online anxiety event uh, coming up on December 9th. Mm -hmm. That that one of the worst things that you can do with with social fears and other things like that. One of the worst things that you can do is kind of give in to them and avoid them because it reinforces the anxiety patterns in the brain. And so, as best you can, mm -hmm. find strategies to lean into those and continue to go into them. And then you're gonna probably find them diminish. Okay. Oh, I was gonna Can tell I you ask one more, more thing. Quick question? Yeah, if it goes fast, so I got some other people, but but I'm gonna tell, tell you one more thing. If you go to my book, Changes That Heal, mm -hmm. um, the yes. first I'm 100 section pages in, into that right now. <laughs> okay. Do you remember me talking about? Did you read the time section? Yeah. Have you read that yet? What did I say? That yes, sometimes. It's excellent sometimes parts of yourself can be removed from the experience of time so they can't really grow mm -hmm. up and they become frozen in time like childhood trauma mm -hmm. or childhood development and they've got to be reintegrated into the experience of time and that's what i'm suggesting here so i'd go back and read that okay. in light of our conversation okay excellent okay so here's my quick question for you structure wise as i'm structuring a path for healing it feels to me like one therapy session a week might not really work i i feel like i might need more structure more input than that you way 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 um, way way me. way 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 agree with you i totally agree with you i think you need more than that okay what do what are some just, ways that just, i could do that just, i don't really know what well to do. i mean it's not unusual for people to go to individual therapy um several times a week, especially in dealing with dissociation and stuff like that. But I would also want you in a group. Okay. I think that that would be, okay. be very, very helpful, as well as a nice support system that supports you in all of this. Okay. Okay. And okay. Thank it. you so much for your all time. Right. I appreciate Roxanne, it. pleasure to talk to you. I hope this works out well for you. Thanks for your call. You know, a lot of times, um, a lot of times people find themselves experiencing these parts of themselves. They go, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Well, it came from inside of you. And it's um, generally speaking, you know, when you experience those, you're not supposed to, you know, slap it down. You're supposed to integrate it and welcome it and mature it. You know, we all have um, unresolved, you know, in, you can almost say there's kind of three columns to this unresolved trauma or hurts that have just kind of been in the waiting room. Okay, think of, think of you know, you go to the doctor's office, well, good stuff happens in the doctor's office, but sometimes you're in the waiting room forever 
before they can fix this. Well, sometimes your life, since you were traumatized in childhood, you kind of been in the waiting room, waiting in the doctor's office and the doctor's office is going to be some kind of therapeutic or healing relationship, you know, with professionals and probably friends and spiritual community. And so when, when they're there, then you got to bring that part of you out of the waiting room. Well, a lot of times people stay in conflict with these parts of themselves. They just kind of spank them down and say, shut up. I shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't feel this way. I shouldn't be this needy. I should, 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 should. Stop shooting on yourself and bring that part of you into a healing expression and it can grow up. 